just getting out, just got on the ranch <clears throat> out here, getting close to our first set of tracks, but traps. But man, it's just everywhere you turn. Ah, it's just man, it's pretty out here. It's different. It's different, but that's the that's the U.S. and that's the those mountains in Mexico. And you can just imagine lions running through that stuff. <laughs> First catch of the second day. Yeah, a pretty little gray fox there. Ah, that is awesome. Look at that tail. That tail's as big as he is. And this is just a there was there's a ton of other sign in this draw. So this this drain comes, or this wash comes way out from behind that hill and comes on down here. And they actually got it dammed up and got a kind of a stock pond back here. There's bobcat tracks around the edge. There's some coat tracks right here. Tons of javelina tracks. And of course the hogs, or the, not the hogs, but the cows are coming in here too. But man, we're kicking it off. We checked a few traps, but I don't know. Uh, maybe it's just me but my little bit of superstition in me i do not take a uh check the first trap having a catch as a good sign and now of course it was a mountain lion i care less if we caught anything the rest of the day but uh or coyote or bobcat for that matter that's like if you catch a possum in the first trap it's not a great sign for the day but we're a few traps in still got a lot of traps a lot of good ground to cover we already got catches on the board so i like it so here's a couple things that are helping kind of manage the trap line because all this I mean this looks gets to where it looks pretty similar and uh, it can be tough to remember exactly where every set is so we got the GPS tracking with a log of where the traps are and then I got my handy trap line journal here that's got the GPS number kind of a uh, idea of where it is and then what sets are and uh, what we caught them on. So let's see, this is location 14. So location 14, that's some um, uh, wildlife predator control outdoor supply, uh, MR1. So B BT is a bobcat tail, skin bobcat tail. Uh, Rusty Johnson's 138, another lure that, or a bait that um, I'm not sure what it is. <laughs> Somebody sent me some bait last year and I didn't use it and uh, still fresh and good. So I think it's from uh, Trap Shed Supply Company uh, and then some of Wiser Supercat. So we can get this uh, Fox dispatched and get this set remade. Here's the remake. Um, I had more <clears throat> brush coming out blocking yesterday. So my trap is actually out from the back a pretty good bit. You can see under that grass is where the beaver tail is. Um, so I just, a lot of times with these, I'll make kind of a walk through on a remake. The sand is super easy to work with and that makes life really nice. But uh, I just, it's, I know that shades, sun's tough, but I just kind of made a couple mounds running right into there. Got my little turkey feather dipped in a lure. I'm gonna move that back a little bit. Um, and then my trap's out here. If you can see it, I've got a little, stick guy there try to get him to step on the pan here and then uh, another one there so i like it we'll see what else we got and got my hopes all kinds of up i think we got hammered by a coon last night it could be another gray fox this is one of my lion sets we you can see the old tracks here kind of make out the pad and the toes we didn't see this first day we saw this yesterday and i came here and i could see something had gone on and i was looking i saw my dragon i saw my chain it took me a minute i was like man you gotta be kidding me thinking it might have been a gray fox that killed us i had a, a dog proof right up here and i had a bunch of cat food strode around and all the cat food has been eaten, but the dog food in the trap is still in there. I think we got old Gray Fox messing with us. Maybe that was him. 
and I just caught we won't have any other problems but I'm gonna dress these up a little bit and we'll keep going coming up this is where we had the bobcat yesterday let's see if we got anything today although my feathers gone huh, there's my feather way over there so we had a visit let's check it out okay, I'm way zoomed in sorry about that so see whatever I think it's a coon stupid coons but he walked right around he rocked this rock just a little bit and then pulled my feather out and just skirted right around the edge of my pan. Is that sucker? We'll put the feather back and we can bust him. We got some a couple of DPs just around the corner. Move that in a little bit. Looks like he took a leak on me there too. He must have been telling me what he thought of me. Another gray fox. Pretty, look at all that white on it. That was a gray fox on an expander pan, you see. And of course we know how light-footed and avoidance-footed gray foxes can be. This was kind of a walkthrough set. Man, I tell you what, this sand is a blessing and a curse because it sure makes you know kind of situating your set easy but it also uh, it can make everything getting everything solid kind of tough I don't typically use a polyfill or pan cover on these expander pans but with this sand the way it is I think it probably is a good idea so it didn't hurt on that one anyway did it this is not what I'm used to in the old Georgia red clay the one thing you still have to be careful about out here is there's rocks all over the place and so you gotta be careful about just um, pushing stuff around because you can get a rock in your pattern and that's definitely not what we want. I'm just gonna kind of make a use this sand to my advantage and make just a a walk through here. A little bit more. I'd say there's pretty good odds that a lot of times gray foxes you got a good chance of catching the pair so if we catch one today at least in in the east good odds of catching another one in the the mate tomorrow so let's see what i was on here a little bobcat urine Some Caven's Canine Force. And I'm just gonna, because the sand, I mean, you ain't putting a punch hole or anything in this sand, so I'm just gonna put this lure right up under this little piece of uh, dry dirt put a little wool on each side because it's not it's not a massive amount of um, fencing I want to encourage them to step where I need them to step and I'll back up here and show you what we got
you can see there's a walk through it's got a got some blocking on the sides anyway so hopefully that rascal walk right through where we need him oh, well what do we have here trap pull right out of the bed Typically, I equate that to deer. Let's see, we got a little bit of. Hmm. Look at that. That looks like a paw, though. I don't think that's deer. I'm afraid we missed something good here. Shoot. I will. All we can do. I kind of set this up as a put some bait and some feathers and then put a little rub lure up there. It's just this little wash. But this, it's kind of funny. These different parts of these ranches as you come along, it gets off away from the river and these washes get a lot smaller. And uh, I don't know, it's interesting. It's just, it's all just a little bit different. Yeah, reset the trap. I don't know if you see it. No. That's probably not even a quarter inch extra width. But it definitely didn't allow the jaws to close all the way. And that's a tough thing. I got this you know, the sifter that I've got. Which I got a, a smaller one. I might need to start using it some. You know, it'll sift all these bigger rocks out, but all these, you know, small rocks. And I wasn't thinking of being an issue, but that right there might have cost me. Oh boy, we got another stinker. The pretty one. This is kind of ironic. There's actually a big hole dug here. Um, and that's right where I made that set. Uh, it didn't go very deep. Uh, and we passed it going in. And on the way out, we looked at this wash. This. That's weird here, dog barking back in here. We passed it going uh, in. And then coming out, we decided we need to take a closer look at this wash. And uh, so I said, well, heck, man, this is a nice big hole here. I put a beaver leg in it. Look at him. He ain't liking it. Look at me. And then uh, I kind of made a, you, I, I kind of made a, uh, kind of a trench set almost out to the road so that it was obvious by anything passing the road that something was going on there. And uh, <laughs> it definitely caught something's attention. A lot of people, man, that's a that's a pretty skunk. That's a lot bigger than the one we caught yesterday. A lot of people get kind of wary of skunks or nervous, but it's kind of funny. You can you can generally approach them as long as you stay kind of slowly moving and, and quiet. You can generally uh, approach them without a whole lot of issue. So I'm gonna get this fella dispatched. We shot the one yesterday through the lungs, and uh, he didn't spray. So that was a uh, a major positive so we'll see if we can have the same look with this one so this is a lot of what we've been doing is just getting out <clears throat> and walking some of these arroyos looking for that right there um and this is just a typically we kind of look for a little bit larger because this doesn't look like it drains a whole lot but it's got this water water hole right here and believe it or not down here by the river there is a is a pretty good bit of water and so you know finding a water hole was not necessarily a jackpot scenario for nailing predators uh, and you get to deal with the cows as you can see so 
um, you know, some of the ranches have more cows or more concentrated cows than others, and so that's kind of what we've been working around is trying to find what look like good spots. Um, you know, getting out, walking around, looking for sign, and then uh, and then setting those up to try to avoid the cows getting all up in our business. So I'm gonna look around here for a little bit more and see what we can't find. Mm. Something schooled me last night here. We just put these sets in yesterday. Got up and got a couple of my lure sticks. See the ants in there too, huh? Kind of looks maybe like a gray fox. Of course, that could be a coon. I don't know. Gotta do something about this. Well, crap. We definitely had something here. <clears throat> definitely had something. Tell what, but it definitely pulled out, and that is an expander pan. See right where it was caught, right there in that. Well, shucks. This ground looks, you can see some claw marks. The ground looks damp, and it is, but it doesn't take a track real well. You can see some old tracks here. That's something we were looking for, though. See the coyote or bobcat one. Shucks. We got one more location, I believe. Actually, I was trying to recall exactly where I had sit and I walked around about here and I saw main man I think I startled him as much as he startled me <laughs> so that's uh four critters two grays and two skunks and two more traps to check how about these old cows They're trying to make a living out here in the desert Some of them actually look surprisingly good, but there is a good bit of, compared to up here, a good bit more feed down by the river, so I don't know why some of them stay up here on the mountain, on the hill. So here's a really neat location. I should have checked and seen what the what the altitude was, what how high this was, but this is a natural spring that's coming out of, you can see these kind of peaks and I'm well up away from the uh, the river now um, in the in the desert uh, I have to once I get back a little bit higher you can see there's some bigger mountains kind of back over and through there and uh, you can see there's kind of these three ravines gullies whatever coming and feeding and then this spring comes out and I mean that's cattails there's frogs in uh, in amongst those cattails, I walked in, we walked down there yesterday, uh, and it just just feeds on down, and it eventually peters out before it gets to the river and goes underground, I guess. But just man, it's a really neat look, neat little spot. Now, supposedly, according to the rancher, there was a guy several years ago that came in here and and trapped some mountain lions, and he trapped some somewhere up just up that little canyon a little ways or that little 
gorge and so I'm gonna throw a trap and a drag over my shoulder and see if I can uh, find a good place to set it up they he's got a there's a they got a camp it's I don't know probably three quarters of a mile down this uh, creek here and uh, just a neat little spot and there's an Audad skull that's not too terribly old uh, and they found that Audad skull up here apparently what they assume was a lion caught it coming down to to get a drink so this is more classic I would say lion country than what we've been you know messing with down lower in the along the river bottom but we've been sitting on a sign there so uh, we'll see what pans out all right cat trappers this is my best attempt at a western cat mountain lion set hopefully uh, supposedly this is how uh, a fella several years ago caught three mountain lions up in this this canyon narrowing down narrowing down a part of this wash the only problem is i don't know if it was right here because this is a big spot um but i narrowed down that part a little bit and i've got some rub lure i've got some bobcat urine i've got some actually beaver caster lure oh that'd be a nice touch i got my large pan number five bridger exposed pan that feels really awkward i'm really concerned about these little rocks in here making me nervous there's nothing really to uh bed with up here i've got my drag typically i run 10 foot of drag um or 10 foot of chain on my drag of course i'll only use the drags in the east i never use drags that much but there's not anything there's not a whole lot to catch on up here like trees and whatnot so i added I had an extra length of chain. I, I can't, I'm not sure exactly how much it is. It's probably close to 20 feet. Attached it to my 10 feet of drag. So I figured that's somewhere between 20 and 30 feet of chain. And uh, I took my drag back up in there, up under that hole. And just hopefully that'll catch on something, slow him down. And uh, I also tried to block off this side a little bit too. So we will, uh, hmm. We'll see if he comes down to get him a drink or check on anything that's coming to get a drink. I did put some uh, Wiser Super Cat up on top of the rock, which is actually a skunky uh, lure. So we'll see what happens. I got me a trail camera set over there. It actually worked out just right with that little rotten log thing. Um, so if we do get anything here, we ought to have something, some video on it. So we'll see expect much water or as much ducks out here there's a big group that already got up and flew off all right look at them look at them look at all those ducks man oh man i got you up in the sky look at all of them oh there's some more that's really cool Out here getting some skinning done, wrapping up the day. We round it, rounded it out with two foxes, two grays, and two skunks. Look at the tail on this thing. Man, that's such a long, pretty tail. But uh, out of 50 traps, so not quite 10%. I can live with that for sure. Um, and in my opinion, every every day, all those sets just get better and better. Got a few more sets out. Um, tomorrow, we're probably going to run those. I think we've got that section of the line pretty well covered. And so we may come down here, kind of into the, the farm country a little bit, and uh, start setting some, setting some traps out here. So still got more traps that definitely have to go out. So we'll catch you all tomorrow.